When we started the Elf on the Shelf, our, my main goal was just to have an elf on every shelf for every child who wanted one. Carol Ebersold grew up in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, with a tradition that, at the time, not many families had. I grew up with an elf named Fisby. I thought I would see it move maybe a little or blink its eye or, or something like that. And come to find out, he was straight from Santa. Years later, she and her daughter wrote a book they call Elf on the Shelf. We went to trade shows and to the Junior League and to anybody who was having a mistletoe market of any type. And we took all of our, all of our inventory and we practically would stop people on, in the aisles of the show and say, have you ever heard of the Elf on the Shelf? Nowadays, you'd be hard pressed to find anyone who hasn't heard of Elf on the Shelf. Eversold's elves have been in the Macy's Day Parade, on cereal boxes, TV, and recently on stage in a new musical. I'm still realizing that it's a success. Every day I get surprised more and more by people saying things to me about it. For her, it's simply a family tradition that continues to grow. Just like another family's, but theirs is older and a little further down the road. George Vanderbilt opened his Biltmore House in Asheville on Christmas Eve, 1895. Years after the Vanderbilts decked the halls, yeah, that's good. Floral yep, manager I did it. Lizzie Borchards leads a team of designers kind of lower in parallel, yeah. to decorate the 250-room home for their two-month-long Christmas celebration. We start decorating from the upstairs down. By the time we get to the first floor of the house, it's really kind of has taken over and Christmas is everywhere. The last tree to come in is a 35-foot tall Fraser fir for the banquet hall. I think that's kind of the special moment where it all really does feel real. It's the same size and type as the tree George Vanderbilt decorated on that first Christmas Eve. It looks beautiful. All the decor we're wanting to make sure either tells that story or you know tells the story of the Vanderbilts and the family and the lifestyle that they lived here. On the other side of Knoxville, just a road trip away in Nashville, is Gaylord Opryland. This is Music City, home of country music, and so that's kind of what we pulled in from for our 36-year tradition here of a country Christmas. The resort is decorated in thousands of poinsettias and millions of lights, both inside and out, where horses and carriages stand by to take guests on a tour of the grounds. But the one attraction that keeps people coming back and Every time I see somebody, they're always just so blown away by this attraction. It's our ice attraction. This year's theme is the movie A Christmas Story. So you're walking through the movie essentially and seeing the different iconic scenes and it's all carved in ice. Two months before opening day, 40 artisans flew from Harbin, China to transform two million pounds of solid ice into art. In Harbin, the average temperature is about six degrees. In our ice attraction, our temperature is nine degrees. Now don't worry, we give you a parka and so you can enjoy the attraction without getting too cold, but that's all part of the experience. But these artisans are incredible what they do. While the sculptures took several weeks to carve, the planning started in July. By then, employees at Dollywood in Pigeon Forge were already decorating for Smoky Mountain Christmas. Christmas lights actually start going up around June, around mid-June when you actually start seeing Christmas lights come on the park. Dollywood's signature look covers almost every building in millions of multicolored lights that employees spend months stapling. It's like a puzzle, figuring these out, how to go with them, so you don't double back and you don't have a whole bunch left. We take such detail into all of this. When the lights turn on in November, they don't turn off again until January. And a Christmas parade of many colors rolls through the park every night. All the time and blood, sweat, and tears it takes for Crunch Week, we're exhausted when we open, but it makes every bit of it worth it when we see the experience that the guests get to see and feel when they come into the park, and it makes every bit of it worth it. Further east in Bristol. It's a wonderful show, but there's a lot of heart in it. Bristol Motor Speedway celebrates with a light display of its own. There are over 250 displays. There are millions of lights. It's just it's just a fun night to come out and enjoy, and of course, then end up in the infield. The annual tradition shines a light on a need in the community, 
It's why Claudia Bird says families come back year after year. We decided this is something that every family could support. So every family in the, in the area could come out and support this, bring their entire family through, and feel like they're making a difference. The money goes to more than 100 nonprofits through Speedway Children's Charities. They've raised nearly $16 million over 22 years, more than 900,000 last year alone. We want people to come out and see Speedway and Lights and really enjoy it and have a great time. But we want them to remember that by doing that, you're making a difference in thousands of children's lives. Helping others is one tradition that stood the test of time. And while nonprofits rely on this boost in compassion that spikes around the holidays, there is one thing they wish others knew that would truly make an impact.